War. War never changes, especially the most brutal, least deadly, and silliest war of them all, the console wars. As some of you know, I used to be a console boy myself. I made a whole video a long time ago about switching to PC. You know, check it out if you haven't. But before that, I had to participate in the never-ending war between Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. But it wasn't always this way. The console war started in the early 90s between Sega and Nintendo, with the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis being the first thing that I remember, but I wasn't really alive during most of this. But long story short, Sega had more third-party games and blood and gore, while Nintendo had better first-party games. There really wasn't a clear winner of this war yet. During this generation, you could really pick either of these consoles, they're both pretty good. Then comes 1995, Macro was born. Growing up, the first console we had was the Nintendo 64, and for my parents, it was an easy choice. Sony had just joined the video game industry with the PlayStation, but it was marketed for teens and adults with blood and gore and blocky boobs. You don't hunt them, they hunt you. Dino Crisis from the makers of Resident Evil. PlayStation. Meanwhile, the 64 was for kids and families, with a few exceptions. And since there were three of us growing up, and the PlayStation was only for two players at most, the 64 was just an obvious choice for my family. But in this time period, the consoles had distinct differences, and Microsoft wasn't even here yet. Sega was also selling Dreamcasts, and while my cousins had it, and it had classics like Sonic Adventure and Jet Set Radio, Sega ultimately was the first big casualty of the console wars. Never making console ever again. The next generation is wild. Nintendo releases the GameCube with classics like Luigi's Mansion, Double Dash, and Melee. Sony releases the PS2, and now Billy Gates is here with a box with an X on it. And everyone's like, yeah, and? But this war is over quicker than it begins. Microsoft does a good job in its debut, Nintendo underperforms, and Sony sells the number one highest selling console of all time. We had it, you had it, your mom had it. Why? Well, it was a DVD player, unlike the GameCube with its, you know, dumb baby discs. So with that alone, my dad was sold. But the games, mwah. Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, Kingdom Freakin' Hearts. And since the OG PlayStation had discs before, you could play your old PS1 games on this bad boy too. Try blowing your cartridge on your GameCube, Nintendo doofuses. <laughs> Got him. So yeah, during this generation, Sony clearly won. But Nintendo and Microsoft would learn from their mistakes. This next generation is what I call the golden age of consoles, since all three were pretty dope in their own ways. Microsoft had been busy perfecting online gaming and creating a new game, Gears of War, and introduced a sequel to a game that to this day is my favorite game of all time. I feel like everybody I knew growing up had Halo 3, so we all had to have an Xbox 360. But the PS3 was still dope. Initially, it was a bit overpriced because it had to do this Blu-ray shenanigans, which did give it insane graphics. But eventually, the PS3 did rise to the occasion with really amazing games like Uncharted 1, 2, 3, God of War, Little Big Planet, and The Last of Us. It was probably the first time where I knew a lot of people with both consoles. Then Nintendo decided to double down on being the console for family-friendly fun. We would like to play. So they created the Wii, which was insanely fun with Wii Sports, Brawl, Mario Kart, and the usual Nintendo dopeness. The controller was so unique. Everything about this was so different from the Xbox and the PlayStation at the time. This is also where I noticed the trend where Nintendo essentially backed out of the console war and focused on dominating the family-friendly market, something that Xbox and PlayStation didn't really focus on at all. I mean, the PSP did try to compete in the portable market, but we all knew that Nintendo was going to win that. Oh yeah, and Xbox had the Kinect, but uh... Besides Just Dance, it kinda sucked. However, by this point, people were so deeply PlayStation fanboys or Xbox bros that it became difficult to logically discuss which console was better. The most recent generation is the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and the Wii U slash Switch time. I say slash because Nintendo had released the Wii U and it was such a failure that they quickly released the Nintendo Switch a couple years ago. We all want to forget about the Wii U. 
even Nintendo. I mean, every single Wii U game can be found on the Switch now. The Switch is really cool. It's portable, it's easy to use, it's for the family. Nintendo will keep making stuff for the Switch for a while because this perfectly hits their market. The Xbox One and PS4 is where the war has gotten brutal. For starters, Microsoft's biggest game, Halo, was no longer being made by Bungie, who left to make Destiny, a game available on either platform. Halo was still a selling point, but many fans did not like Halo 4 or 5, and Gears of War wasn't doing so hot either. PlayStation, however, dominated. PS4 had Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man, Detroit become human, Bloodborne, sequels to Uncharted, God of War, and The Last of Us. But macro, Xbox has the Game Pass. Yes, I know about the Game Pass, but it's to grant access to games that I've usually already played before or never wanted to in the first place. It's nice, but it's not enough to make me buy a whole console that lacks exclusives. And I know the Xbox One has backwards compatibility, and for a lot of people, not being able to play your old games can suck. But if you want to play your old games, just keep your old console. Selling it is never worth it. I mean, GameStop will give you like 10 bucks for it. So I find that to be a lame reason to pick one over the other. I will 100% get hate from Xbox fans, but remember, I had an Xbox One before switching to PC, so I knew firsthand that I had made a mistake getting the box. And later, I would end up getting a PS4 that came with Spider-Man because I just wanted to play Spider-Man that badly, and it was great. Which brings us to the current day. The PS5 and the Xbox Series X were both announced, and I have to say that both look pretty underwhelming. Both have games that I wonder, why couldn't we just play them on their current generation of consoles? Amazing, aren't they? Half bug, half snacks. Welcome to the island of bug snacks. My strongest recommendation to Xbox fans is to save up for a PC. Why? Well, it looks like Microsoft may be going in a similar direction to Sega and focusing on software over hardware. Their biggest game, Halo Infinite, will also be released on PC. And one of its best features, the Xbox Games Pass, can be used on PC as well. So the only thing that the Xbox Series X has is higher specs, but with that logic, you might as well just get a PC because your PC can be built to have the highest specs, higher than any Xbox Series X. I wouldn't be surprised if Halo Infinite sells as much, if not more copies on PC. Sony, on the other hand, has a boatload of great exclusive games and won't be going anywhere anytime soon. We will most likely expect a bunch of sequels to a lot of these classics, which would mean that Nintendo and Sony would win the console wars. Nintendo for the family-friendly side and Sony for everybody else. Now obviously Xbox Series X will sell copies, but what I am saying is that, like the Dreamcast, if it doesn't do well, it will signal the end of Microsoft consoles. But what do you guys think? Is the console wars looking like it might end, or it's still going to keep at it? If you're a Nintendo, Sony, Google Stadia, I'm just kidding, nobody's a Google Stadia fan, or a Microsoft fan, let me know why in the comments down below. But now, I'll catch you later.